I'm John McConnell. This is overhead image factors for underwater sonar based SLAM. So, first, let's talk about SLAM. SLAM allows us to estimate the vehicle state and map it as we go. However, as the mission progresses, drift will accumulate. We need loop closures to minimize this drift. However, these are trajectory dependent and often ambiguous. So, the research question in this work is how can we use overhead images to minimize the drift in our sonar based SLAM system? So first, overhead images, they're free or very low cost from vendors like Mapbox and Google, and they come in at a similar resolution to our sonar sensor, about five to 10 centimeters. Some key challenges for use, overhead images are in RGB, sonar is not. Uh, overhead images also come in at a, a top-down view, where sonar images are more of a water level view. Uh, and obviously, uh, you know, the vessels may be in different locations between image capture time and mission execution time. Okay, so what do we provide to the vehicle a priori? We have a functional SLAM solution, albeit with drift, an initial GPS fix, and then this overhead image segmentation shown in green. This identifies the structure that's going to be useful as an aid to navigation in this algorithm. So conceptually, we're going to start at this red dot, we're going to move along some trajectory to our current state. We're going to say, what should I see in terms of the green segmentation? We can compare that to what we actually see in the sonar imagery, resolve the differences in appearance, and then find the transformation between those two data structures. Okay, so top left, green with black background. We have the candidate overhead image, which is just uh, what we should see at our current state. We have a sonar image from the same time step. We're going to take those and push them together into UNET. The output of UNET shown here in magenta with black background. We can use the output of UNET, which is the candidate overhead image transformed into the sonar image frame with the original candidate overhead image in ICP to find the transformation between those two. We can then roll that in to our SLAM graph. On the left, we have an example SLAM mission without overhead image factors. Green lines are odometry, red lines are loop closures. You can see compared to the gray overhead image mask, drift is heavily evident. When we add the blue lines on the right hand side, the overhead image factors, you can see we drastically reduce that mission drift compared to the gray overhead image mask. So to highlight the novelty of our framework, we're able to resolve the differences between the overhead images and the sonar images and roll these overhead image factors into our already functioning SLAM system, reducing the mission drift. We're also able to demonstrate in the paper that we can train in simulation and function on real world data. Can you tell me a little bit about your presentation just now? Sure, so we're using overhead images which are satellite images or images captured from a low-flying UAV as an assist for an underwater vehicle using a sonar-based SLAM solution uh, to reduce its drift. Yeah, so this, you said this is for uh, unmanned service vehicles or underwater vehicles? This is for unmanned underwater vehicles. Okay, all right. Is it limited to unmanned underwater vehicles? Why not also use it for... You can use it for, for any system you'd want um, that's using sonar as the primary perceptual input uh, that's also accumulating drift. The reason we focus on unmanned underwater vehicles is because GPS doesn't work underwater, right? So what we're doing is using these overhead images as a, a GPS proxy, basically, to take a stable SLAM solution that's drifting with time, it's getting worse with time, and we're taking a look at these overhead images and we're using uh, CNN, Convolutional Neural Network, to work out what exactly is in our sonar imagery and our overhead imagery uh, to fuse them and reduce the slam drift. Yeah, so basically as you're doing your slam, it's pretty good at the piece to piece uh, localization, but then it drifts over time and this is allowing it to stay locked in, yeah. in place. Yeah, we could just say, you know, keep it on the rails, right? Yeah, so, and then these, um, so the imagery that you're getting, satellite imagery, where are you getting this from? Yeah. So this is uh, free or very low cost 
from vendors like Mapbox, Google, uh, and I'm sure there's other ones out there. And if uh, you know you were working in a military application, you'd have access to some even better yeah. satellite imagery. Uh, or you could use you know uh, DGI Phantom to put it up over the survey area before you go out. Uh, so it's it's pretty flexible with regard to the source of the overhead imagery, but we do segment it. Uh, so we identify the structure that we care about and the structure that we do not care about. Yeah. So maybe for a high cost application, then you actually get a drone, go out there and map it yourself. Yeah. Or and, yeah. Or task a satellite. Pure. Yeah. Yeah. Or task a satellite. Yeah. Yeah. So and um, well, so what's the frequency rate that say the satellite images are generally updating by? And then yeah. is this something that you think about as you're locating your slam algorithm on um, the satellite imagery? Yeah. So your question is really, if I have my uh, satellite image or my overhead image of the environment, right, and I take that picture on a Tuesday, but I'm going to go do my work on Friday, right? Have things changed? And right, the answer is absolutely yes. Yeah. Right. We're working in uh, littoral environments, so near shore environments, and we test primarily in arenas. So when you take that overhead image, you have a, a smattering of small boats, right? Mm -hmm. uh, those boats are not in the same place, mm -hmm. right? So that's why we use this convolutional neural network to aid in the translation, not translation like X, Y, but translation. I see this in sonar and I have this prior, you know, sketched out of what should be there given my overhead image. But we uh, deliberately omit vessels from the overhead image segmentation. And part of what the CNN is training to learn is to also omit objects that are not present in the overhead imagery. Mm -hmm. So you're actually detecting like what type of object is this? Like you, you can understand this is a dynamic object. We don't expect it to be here tomorrow. Yeah. Um, but this is a landscape or this is a building. Or this yeah. Is a or, Up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We rely heavily on, on structures uh, that we expect to not move, right? So breakwaters, yeah. piers, things like that. And this is all automatically calculated. Yeah. We don't explicitly call out each object and say, okay, this is a vessel, you know, I don't care about this. What we do is we provide a context clue, which we call in our work, a candidate overhead image. And we also use the sonar image. We take those and push them into UNET together and UNET just learns to drop out uh, what's not in the context clues. Yeah, and have there been any challenges that you ran into? I mean, many, many, many challenges. Uh, when you test an algorithm like this, uh, one, the biggest question that comes up is ground truth, right? How do you grade and how do you also generate enough training data for a data hungry CNN like UNET, right? So we have to deal with a lot of that uh, by working simulation. And do you expect this to come out, say, to be open source or to industry? Yes. With any uh, near time frame? Yes. When do you expect? Hopefully in the next six months. We have our uh, open source SLAM framework, uh, which you can take a look. If you look at my personal GitHub, Jake3991, you'll find a repo called uh, Sonar Slam that has the baseline SLAM system, and we're expecting to incorporate the overhead image stuff in the next six months. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hey, John.